All right, so here's my VelociRaptor server project, 371, and I'm using Debian Linux on Intel. And um, I was just wondering if I could do this on an ARM-based Debian, and maybe, but you need to connect it to Windows machine anyway, and that has to be on Intel right now. There is no publicly available uh, ARM-based Windows, as far as I know, and I imagine this VelociRaptor software is not ready to run on ARM, so uh, use um, Intel for your machines. So the first thing you're going to do is get the Lossy Raptor Linux server working. So installed on Linux, and this is the 371 here. So let me close these other tabs just to make my life simple. And let's go look and see what the latest version is. Um, all right, the latest version is 0.6.6. .6. And... Uh, there's the assets. You see various versions of it. One thing about, so what VelociRaptor is, is an instant response framework. It's very nice. And the executable for the server is the same as the executable for the client, which makes things easy. However, if the server and client are running different operating systems, then you need different ones, of course. And so I have a 64-bit Linux, so I need this one on the Linux. And I'll have a 64-bit Windows, so I will need uh, this one for the Windows. Uh, right, and that's the signature. And the signature file is just, uh, you know, something, a few bytes you could use to verify it hasn't been modified, and I'm not going to bother with that. So on my AMD64 Linux machine, I want this file here. So I'm going to right-click and copy the link location, and then I think I just W-get it. Yep. All right, so I'll make a directory to put it in, just to keep things tidy. Raptor and go into there. All right, and then W get the thing I just put in the clipboard. All right, there it is, the latest version of the Linux um, Velociraptor binary. And I've uh, got it. Good, now I just need to make it executable, which is shmode plus x, and it'll be that. I use tab completion, and that way I get the right name in the latest version instead of copying these instructions, which would get an old version, although if you consistently downloaded the old version at every step, it would probably be okay. I just, as best practice, it's better to use the latest version. All right, now I'm going to need the IP address of my server. And so that is right um, here, 192.168.11.12. Okay, that's the address I'm going to need. All right, so let's check my, we're going to con con create this configuration file, which is a YAML file, which is a format where indentation matters, like Python, a common file used for a lot of things. So I'll create velociraptor.config.yaml. Oh, no, it should have already been there. Oh, I skipped a step. This one here is what creates that file. Okay, let me get out of here and list my files. Okay, good. So I have to run it to create the configuration file. That's what this does. Generate, config generate, and put it in that file, velociraptor.config.yaml. Okay. All right. Let's run that. Uh, oh, yes, and now I got the problem that I didn't have the right version number there. So I'm going to copy all of it except the name of the Velociraptor executable. And then I'll use tab completion to put in the right value of that. So it's dot slash ve tab and then the stuff in my clipboard config generate. There that creates that Velociraptor config.yaml file which I tried to nano before. And now when I go in there there's a bunch of stuff in there. And the point is I have to fix if by default, Velociraptor will only listen for administration on localhost, 127.0.0.1. And then I could only configure it from this local machine, and I'd like to be able to configure it for elsewhere, although in my cloud servers here, there's not much point. But if you were working on your home machine with virtual machines, it would be more convenient to use it, configure it from a browser on, on, your, uh, on your host. So anyway, it's nice to uh, use the public address to make it listen. And that's 192.168.11.2 in this address. If you're using a cloud server, too, you could configure it from anywhere. So I need to replace... Um, there are three of them, and I replace, I think, localhost with that address. Yeah, 
127.001. Okay, so control W, control R is how you replace things, and it is localhost. Replace it with that address, 192, 168, 11, 12. And there are only three of them, so it's yes, yes, yes. Oh, only saw two of them. That's a little disturbing. Oh, only two of them here. Okay, good. All right. Third, I'm done. So I save this with Control X, Y, Enter. All right, now that created the file, but Velociraptor expects it to be in the etc folder, so I'm going to put it there with this command to make the uh, configuration file live in the folder where Velociraptor expects it to be. And now I'll run it, and again, I need to use tab completion to get the right name of the current software, and this specifies the config, which is just that other path, and then I'm going to do user add admin role administrator. I have to create an administrator account to configure the server. So that's what I do, dot slash ve tab, and then putting the stuff in my clipboard. So this will use that config file and add administrator role administrator. Now it's going to ask me for a password, so I'll put in a password I can remember. And it doesn't ask me to repeat it, which is another clue. You're using open source free software. Um, Rapid7 bought this thing about a year ago, and I'm sure they, when they uh, are done making it into a more commercial-like product, it'll have a GUI and little details like that will be more user-friendly. Anyway, it's still pretty good. All right, and so after I've done that, I've added the administrator. Now I'm going to start the Velociraptor server, which is I'll use tab completion to get the right version, and then add this stuff, the configuration file, and it's front end minus V. That will run what's called the front end server. So I do dot slash VE tab, paste in this, which specifies where the config is and tells it to run front end in verbose mode so we will see some messages go by, and there they go, starting something. Now it says the GUI is ready on 127.001.8889, and the front end is ready on 192, 168, 11, 12. Uh, that is, this shouldn't be 127.001. That's disturbing me. So I think that means I somehow failed to replace one of those things in the configuration file. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit Control C to stop it. I'm going to go back into my config file, which was this one, nano, and try, whoa, that's, oh, I moved it. All right, fine, Control X. I'm going to nano it where it lives, which is now, Etsy, Etsy, and for that I'm going to need to be sudo. All right, now I'm going to look for 127, 001, and replace it with 192, 168, 11, 12, and there is one in there. I somehow failed to replace it. Yes, and yes, there's more of them. I thought there were more. Hmm, all right. We'll see what that does. I think that's what I want. We're going to see. So now um, let's try starting Velociraptor again. Now I'm seeing what I expected. The GUI is available on this address, which if this was a cloud server, that would be a public address. And then the uh, front end is available here. All right, now um, that shows it's running. And now you can view the GUI. So for this, I'd like to use my Windows machine. It'll be easier. So I've got a Windows machine available. Uh, let me go to my uh, here and open my Windows machine on my private cloud. And it's this one. And all uh, right, looks like it's status stopped. Start, okay, good. I started right before using it because uh, I, my license expires, so it shuts down every hour or so. so. I could reinstall it to get another series of 180-day uh, trials, but I can't be bothered. My demos don't last an hour anyway. All right, it's moving. Now I should be able to do console, no VNC, and I'll have Windows. And this window should be on the same network, so that's why I wanted to listen on a public address. It's not an address public to the internet, but it's public to my home network, so 
I can see it here, there. So I should be able to open the front end here in a browser like Firefox. Okay, and it was, I think it's ending in 8889. Let me check the instructions, uh, which I guess I might as well open the instructions in here where it's a little more friendly. This is 152 projects. And there's Velociraptor. I think it ends in 8889. I'm just going to go down to the picture. Yep, you put in the address ending in 8889. So let's try that. It was 192. Oh, probably HTTPS. 192, 168, 11, 12, colon, 8889. All good. This is what you expect to see. I warned you that the certificate is probably no good. It's self-signed because I didn't bother to put a real certificate on these. So I go to advanced and uh, accept the risk and continue. Now I need to log in with the username and password I chose, which was admin and a password I chose. When configuring the Velociraptor server, and there we are. I'm now in Velociraptor, and I guess I'll save the password in this browser and make my browser a little smaller so it all use is visible to the people on Twitch. If I can get the bottom. There we go. All right. So this is the home page of Velociraptor with the cute little dinosaur, and now you can do things. So let me just check my instructions and see what we shall do with it next. Uh, here's what you, in Azure, you're going to have to open those ports, 8889 and any other cloud server, because they won't be open by default. And now there's a way to get a flag here, which is fine. And now we're going to add a Windows client, which is the main thing. So on the Linux server, um, we can do this while it's running. So let's go back to our Linux server and create the Windows client file. So here, this one is running, and I'm just going to leave that going and open a new tab. All right, and so down here, that's the flag, I don't care. Okay, we're gonna add a Windows client, there we are. I just want to um, do sudo nano, I need to add something to that configuration file. So I'm gonna do sudo nano etsy, whoa, okay, this is crazy stuff. So sudo, I can just copy this one, it doesn't have the version number in it. Whoops, gotta get the whole thing though, there we are. Right, and now there's a certificate you can see there. It has a self-signed digital certificate, so you can do HTTPS, but you will get a browser warning that it's not a public certificate. And then you go down below the nonce line, I have to add another line. And this is because my client on the Windows machine is gonna to try to connect back to the server. And when it does that, it's going to notice that the server certificate is not signed and it's going to pop up error messages and give me trouble. And I don't want to have that. I want it to know that it's okay that the certificate is not signed. So I add a line here and you do have to indent it two spaces because uh, indentation matters in YAML. At least I think it does. That's what I remember. I'm not entirely sure of that, but I'm going to indent it the correct amount to avoid the problem. That's tell Now I'm going to tell it I'm using self-signed SSL, and I'm going to save this, control X, Y, enter. All right. And now I have to prepare a Windows client installer. I could, on the Windows client, download Velociraptor and put a configuration file in there, but remember, typically, you're working from the server and you're going to deploy it to a whole fleet of machines. So you want a generalized installer that'll just work anywhere. So you make an installer, which by the way, is pretty much the same thing as malware. It's gonna take over the Windows machine and put it under remote control of the command and control server. So it has to have the command and control server's um, IP address in it. So here I'm in the Velociraptor folder and I'm gonna run the um, same executable and then I'm gonna use these settings. So I'll copy it and finish that YAML. So it's the Velociraptor executable and then this stuff, and then finish the ammo. Okay, this is going to um, take the configuration, it's gonna create a client configuration file, just like we created the server configuration file easier, earlier, so that's the client config.yaml. Then I need to download the Windows version. 
um, wwget. And the easiest way to do that is to go back to here and find the Windows version. This is the 32-bit. This is the 64-bit Windows executable. That's what I want. So I copy that link, and then I wget that. All right. That's the Windows executable. And now is this is the uh, great part. Now I run the Linux executable and run config repack exe on the Windows executable. So there are quite a few pieces to this command. So let's do it in stages. First, I run the Linux executable with these parameters. I don't know if I got them or not. We're going to see. I run the Linux executable. Then what's in a clipboard? Config repack exe. That's good. Now I have to have the name of the Windows executable here. So that's going to be, hopefully, tab completion will come to my rescue again. It is. Good. It's um, Windows. Uh, six. Oh, it's two Windows. Zero, zero, dash two Windows. There we go. Okay, good. And the name of the Windows executable. And now, client config YAML. There it is. I, this is the client configuration I just created. And I'm going to, the thing I'm going to call, create is called repackaged Velociraptor. That's just the name I'm using for my Windows agents. So, if I've done it right, that's going to run the Linux software to, to create a repacked executable, taking the generic Windows executable and adding this configuration to it and calling that repackaged Velociraptor. And that will be the self-contained single file malware sort of thing that will uh, include the IP address of my command and control server. So the repackaged executable there is what I need. Now I just need to get that to my Windows machine. And there are many ways to do it, but the simplest way to do it is to run OpenSSH server on this machine. Now, I think it's already running. It's already running on many Linux distributions by default. I can check that with sudo ss minus pant. And uh, there I'm listening on port 22. So this machine is already running OpenSSH server. So since it is, um, I can just fetch it on the Windows machine with WinSCP. So let's do that. If I go to the Windows machine, I want to install WinSCP. Now, I might have already done that. Let me try it. WinSCP. Nope. Okay, it's not here. Now, I think I can even get it from the Microsoft Store or something, but I'm used to just getting it from the manufacturer's website. I'll just do it that way. Here's WinSCP. Download the award-winning file manager. All right. Uh, ignore the stupid edge. Hopefully it's going to download. Maybe I have to hit a download button somewhere. Oh, I remember I can't scroll with it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Download WinSCP. Okay. Good. My download will start shortly. Probably going to the Windows Store would be a better practice than this wandering through the edge. Let's see it in a folder. There it is, WinSCP. So you just run this installer like usual. Run Install for all users. Approve privilege escalation. Accept whatever the terms and conditions are. And next, and next, and install. Because I don't really care about the details. All right, I'm done with this. And I want to launch it, that would be fine. OK, now I'm going to connect to my server. So I just need to put its IP address here, which was 192.168.11.12 on port number 22, and um, I need the username that I logged in with, which in this case was Debian, and I know the password to log into that machine. So now I can log in to my Debian server from here. Uh, continue connecting. Yes, continue connecting. Okay, now I'm in on the Debian machine. And so here, I'm in home Debian, and here's my Velociraptor folder, and in there is my repackaged software. So I just want to put that on my Linux machine and uh, wonder what desktop. Desktop would be fine. OK, let's put it on the desktop. Repackage Velociraptor. There it goes. Downloading something. Good. And there it is. So I'm now done with that SSH thing. 
I don't need to save anything, terminate it. All right, I'm done with this. All right, and there it is, Repackage Velocity Raptor. Now, you don't want to just run it, you want to make it a persistent service. So let me go back to my instructions. After you've got it there, then open a, a command prompt and run the name of it service install. You need an elevated command prompt. So you right click the terminal, right click run as administrator. So now I have an administrator command prompt. So I need to get to my, um, I wonder if this would work in administrator command prompt, percent user profile. The one problem with administrator command prompts is they start in the system directory. Might be one way to get back to normal home. It is, that's nice. Desktop. Okay, now if I do a directory, it should be here. Um, and I see it. Repackaged, Velocity Raptor. So I just want to run that. Service install. All right. It doesn't complain. Now I can check it by launching the services panel. There's always a ton of services on Windows, but somewhere down at the bottom, in the Vs, there it is, Velociraptor is running. So, my Windows machine is now under the remote control of the Linux machine, and I should be able to see that in the control panel of my Velociraptor. And I'm just going to manage my Velociraptor from Windows just because Windows gives a prettier browser. So I can now go up here. Um, Show all clients. And there I have a Windows client. This is what I wanted to show you. So my Velociraptor server is monitoring that Windows client. All right. And uh, let me uh, go to the instructions. And I think all you do is turn in a flag. Once you got your client connected, I think that's it for the... Oh, we'll play a few games. We'll use the virtual file system. So you click the blue link. Yeah, click the blue client ID, and then we can play with the virtual file system. So let's do that. The only time I've ever used it, this is not the way I most prefer to use Velociraptor, but it is an option. If you click this, you will now be able to interrogate your client. And the virtual file system here will let you see the registry, the whole hard drive with NTFS, and sometimes there are other options. So you could, for example, go to the registry, and then you have to refresh it here which I think this one refreshes it, refresh this directory. And I found this to be a slow, miserable experience, but there, now I have HK classes root and such, so if I wanted to go into like HK um, current config or something, I could go there and then reload it. So you can browse the registry and the file system and find things one by one on the client this way. And that's an option. But this is not the most powerful or most effective way to use Velociraptor, and I never do it that way. So let me see if I added in my instructions here some examples of the real queries you're going to use. Um, and I'm still, I'm not looking at my instructions. That's why I can't scroll. Okay, so that's the virtual file system, and there's the registry. All right, and you can explore things that way, but that's for the verge. Here's the fun way to do it. Yeah. So you go to um, collected plus, yep, and then netstat. Okay, so this is where it gets fun. You go back to, uh, I'll just go back home. Um, maybe this will take me home? Yeah. Then all again, just to get, there's probably some other way to do it, but this is one way to get back to the main page. Now, collected. This is the thing. Now, in order to create that stuff before, it was executing queries on the system, and you see them here. These are the various queries I was doing to use that thing called the virtual file system. You use the plus sign, and now you can choose from a list of artifacts, and this is wonderful. Everything you need is in this list. You can write your own, but I've never had to do that. So if I wanted to do network connections, like network statistics, I can see netstat, and I could run this one called Windows Network Netstat Enriched, and it will tell me what it's doing here. Netstat adds additional data points, there might be parameters to configure, 
But in this one, I don't think there are any. I can check. Now, I could. I could specify certain IP addresses and stuff, but I'll just let it tell me everything. So now I can launch it. So I, now it shows me an hourglass. It's launching. And it's going to show me down here. Uh, it's done. It only took a few seconds to do it. And now if I look at results down here, I will see the network statistics from that machine. Um, or so I thought. Oh, I have to highlight it up here. There. Here's my net stat. So it shows me I'm listening on port 135. And if I scroll down, it shows me more and more information about what else I'm doing. Let's see if the down arrow works. Or There we are. So it's in this, this one is kind of too much information to see in this uh, narrow window. Let me make my window wider. I'm getting a little trouble with my interface here. We're done with that Linux machine. I'm going to leave it running, but I don't need to configure it anymore, so I can just use the full width of my Windows machine. And this... Uh, there I... All right. There. All right, for what it's worth, you can see things there. Let's see if I got another example of one that's going to fit on this limited screen more nicely. Let's try Netstat unenriched, actually. That would probably do it. So I'll do another one. I just want a normal Netstat. Windows Network Netstat. Let's launch that one. And click it up here. And here's the results. And there you see, now you just see a normal Netstat. Listing on this port, listing on that port, and so on. So, and there are many good things you can do in there. And uh, so now, hey, we could do Netstat just for Velociraptor. Let's try that one. Netstat enriched for Velociraptor. That shows you how to put a configuration in there. So let's go back and do Netstat. Okay, Netstat enriched. Um, configure parameters. I can find just the Velociraptor agent, which um, process name. Here we are. So I put in Velociraptor. Probably just a few letters of it would work, but I'll put in Velociraptor and launch. And now I get just the information about Velociraptor. So the local address, it's connected to my remote machine on port 8000, which is the data port it uses to get client connections. Here's my local port, which is just a high number. And here's the program Velociraptor. There's the file name, uh, and so on. So it tells you who's connecting and some information about it. All right. And uh, I think that's all I did at this point. Let's see if there are any more in this project. Um, we did NetStat Enriched, we did all this jazz, information about your Velociraptor. And then there's a flag to find somewhere, which is fine. All right, so that's it for 371, and I, that's all I wanted to demonstrate today. Let me just point out uh, where we're going. So and after this, I wrote uh, three little malware samples that just are simple batch scripts or something that do simple things malware does. And we're just going to investigate those in future projects to have a little instant response. So you have something running on the Windows client, and you use Velociraptor to analyze it so you can see how it works. And uh, that's it. I'm going to stop this recording.